Hello everyone, welcome back to the FM Dugout. How y'all doing? So today marks the start of the first Let's Play series for Football Manager 16 on the channel. And I figured I'll go for a big challenge. One that I haven't done before, and one that a lot of other people have, have tried previously and failed. Um, you know, so it's well known to a lot of people in this sort of football manager community. And it's the Hexagon Challenge. Um, many of you might know of it. Um, it was previously known as the Pentagon Challenge until New Zealand was added um, along with that competition. Now, basically what the Hexagon Challenge is, is you have to take a manager and the optional extra here is that you can be an inexperienced manager, so like a Sunday League manager, which is what I've gone for, but you could also have an experienced manager um, and you start off unemployed and you have to try and win each of the six Champions League titles across the globe. So that's the UEFA Champions League, the Asian Champions League, the African Champions League, uh, the North American Champions League, the Copa Libertadores, and also the Oceanic Champions League. So it's going to be a long series. It may well be my only series in Football Manager 16. It just depends on how it goes. Um, my intention is to basically try and keep each video as short as possible, um, get out as many of them as I can. So it might be like, you know, one video per half year or something, depending on, on how the, the game goes. It certainly won't be as I did with previous Let's Plays where I would do an episode every time I had a big game that came along. So make no mistake about it, this is a big challenge and you'll see from the leagues on screen here, you have to run a lot of leagues across a lot of nations. So your PC is going to have to be pretty decent to cope with it. Um, you can choose to start off with one particular region if you want and you can chop and change the nations um, as required. Um, but I've opted to do it the other way and have them all in and start cutting them out. So hopefully the game will improve uh, as the years go on, assuming I actually manage to win one of these tournaments. Now, what you may have noticed is that I have Scotland included here, which may seem like an odd selection because the aim of the game here is to win the Champions League um, in that region. So for Scotland, it's going to be the UEFA Champions League. And that's a challenge in itself to try and do that. So... Why is it there? Well, I'm a Scottish manager. Um, I'm a Scottish manager in the game as well. So I have opted to include Scotland there because it might be possible for me to get a half decent job um, and maybe get a bit of short term success, boost my reputation to allow me to jump somewhere else. So it's not going to be like the conventional lower league manager games where, uh, you know, you stay at the same team for a decade or more. It's going to be more along the lines of stay as long as it's getting you um, somewhere uh, where you can jump ship to get higher up um, and obviously look to jump to another continent to try and push yourself on to, to win that tournament. Um, the other option is to take a job in a lower league in one of the other nations. Now, the benefit of doing that is you will get to know some of that league, you know, the you know, manager will have knowledge of that nation. Presumably they'll start to pick up the language, um, which will put you in good stead to then get a good job in that league and then potentially get a shot at the Champions League within that region. So, you know, that's one of the two options. Now, I'm going to skip ahead in the game. So, I can apply for numerous jobs and I'll be getting back when I actually have a job. So let's see how it goes. So guys, it only took five days and I got my club. And it's Ajman Club in the United Arab Emirates First Division. So this team obviously aren't in the top league, so they cannot get direct entry into the Asian Champions League. So whether or not this is going to be um, a sort of two or three year kind of job and try to get into that Champions League and then obviously try to win it, um, I don't know. It may just be a case of building up a reputation, but it seems like a decent job to start with. The professional, uh, national reputation, secure finances, 
um, known as the Orange Brigade, hence the orange shirt. Um, star player is Driss Fatoui, who is a 25-year-old Moroccan who was formerly capped at the under-20s level. Actually looks a really decent player, um, <clears throat> and uh, he looks like he's going to be the kind of focal point of any attacks through the centre of the park. I definitely won't want to play him out on the left. He looks like he's got the sort of skills that we would want um, you know, in the centre, so he's got good technique, uh, good... First touch, dribbling, flair's not too bad either. Um, vision would have liked it a little bit higher, but you know, can't really complain. So he he looks like a, a an excellent player for us, um, and he's been here since two thousand and twelve, um, <clears throat> and actually won the United Arab Emirates Emirates Cup <laughs> back in two thousand and thirteen. So yeah. I think it looks quite positive at the moment. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the finances to see what secure means. So 3.9 million in the bank. We have a transfer budget of 400K and a wage budget of 81,000, which we're currently overspending. So I will need to take a look at that and see if we can cut it back down um, because otherwise we're not gonna be able to bring in the players we want. In terms of making an adjustment, how much can I get back? Yeah, only eighty nine if I chop it all. So I'll need to see what the free transfer market's like. If it's if it's good enough, then I will obviously make the adjustment to put it all on wages. Now, the one thing that I've noticed here so far is if we take a look at our fixtures, um, <clears throat> we've actually got an FA Cup to take part in, which is actually a league, which is a bit strange. Um, but if you look at the rules for that particular game. Um, where are we? Here. So, the match squad must have no more than three foreign players, which doesn't include Asian players. Now, if I click on Asian, that basically means that I can sign players from any of these places, like in this one here, Australia, South Korea, Japan. So, I, I can pick players from any of those, and they won't count towards um, this foreigner rule. Um, this is kind of a throwback back to the 90s in Europe when they used to have the three foreign player rule. Um, match squad must have no more than four foreign players. So I think it basically means you can have three foreigners who aren't Asian and you can have a fourth foreigner who, you know, they, they could be Asian, right? So you basically can't go beyond four players who are either not Asian or Asian, so seven players must be from United Arab Emirates, so um, we'll see how that goes. In terms of what we'll do for episodes, I'm going to set up the team, the training, the backroom staff, get signings as best I can, play these friendlies, um, and I may well do the first game here against Al Khalees just to, to kind of introduce the team, uh, depending on what signings we've got at that point. My plan will then be to do probably a game against Dubai or someone towards the end uh, or if we've got any kind of uh, cup competitions. I'm not sure if there is another one. There, are, there was that UAE Emirates Cup, which I don't think is the same as the FA Cup. Um, let's just take a look and see what our competitions are. Where are they? <laughs> yeah. Right, so yeah, they are the only two cups that we take part in. So, um, depending on how the FA Cup goes there, um, we might actually do that. But my plan really is to try and limit a full season to just a couple of episodes so I can get through these as quickly as possible. Um, obviously, if I get sacked, I'll do an update video. If I move to another club, I'll do an update video. Um, you know, and if there's any kind of big news, again, I'll just do a quick five minute update video to try and keep the videos coming. Um, so let's take a look at the squad. So we've seen Dress Fatui. We've then got Tata, who is a 28 year old Brazilian, not capped, earning 18,000 a week, which is pretty hefty. Uh, Trek Artista or False Nine. So he looks as though he's kind of a tricky player um, in the final third. And certainly looking at his skills, you can see technique first touch, flair, uh, dribbling, all these kind of skills certainly seem to align with that. It's pacey as well. Um, so yeah, he looks like a, a good prospect. We then have Boris Cabby, who is a 30-year-old Ivorian. 
uh, not capped. Looking at his skills, physicals are good, mentals not too bad at all, teamwork work rate good, uh, team player lacking in the technical side. Um, at least you know finishing, first touch, heading, dribbling are all quite high. Um, not great passing, but you know if he's going to be, he can play as a poacher. That may well be where we play him uh, in that kind of role. I'm undecided yet about the tactics because looking at the squad here, if we put the positions, um, we don't really have much width. We've got a heck of a lot of strikers. So it's looking more like a kind of possibly a 4-3-3 um, with some defensive players and um, certainly Fatui will fit into that, you know, playing through the centre. Um, that may well be what I'll go for. It depends what's there in the transfer market. Um yeah, so let's take a quick look again here. So who else have we got? We've got Hadaf Abdullah, who, not too bad. Um, he's got the potential to be five-star, uh, but he's 23 years old, so you'll need to start moving a bit quicker if he wants to, to realise that potential. He's been here for a number of years, only scored three goals in 32 games, so not particularly great. A uh, quick look at some of the others. Target man here if we want to go with something different. Natural Fitness 4 is pretty poor. Um, one goal in 19 in a couple of seasons. Uh, Ali Kamis, who is one of our only wide players, I think, here. Um, not amazing again, technically. Mentals are okay. Yeah, I think this is, this is going to be the sort of trend and you can see here towards the bottom there's a lot of players here who are just kind of squad fillers and these are the guys that if I don't know what they're getting paid what, what we're looking at it's a few over a thousand so we might look to kind of move they're all back up so we might look to move some of them on and see if we can bolster the first team a little bit more so that's a, a whirlwind tour of the first club on the hexagon challenge so it looks as though the Asian Champions League is going to be the first target, whether or not it's going to be with Ashman or moving to another club in the, the Premier League. Um, <clears throat> see who we've got in the Premier Professional. To be honest, I know next to nothing um, about this league. So you can see from the past winners that Al Alm seem to be the, the kind of main team. Um, so maybe I can target taking them over. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It's this. This is why I wanted to do this challenge, though, because it's new territory to me, and um, it should be really, really exciting. And hope you guys have enjoyed the the first instalment of the series. Um, if you did, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the club choice, um, and how you think it will go. And uh, hopefully, you'll stick around for the second episode when it comes along. So, guys, until the next time, I'll see you when I see you. Super.